to quote Will Smith, I'll make, make this, this look good. good. We are the men in black. How's it going guys? Welcome back to another episode of Luke's Reviews. And on today's video, I'll be reviewing the fourth installment in the Men in Black series. It is Men in Black International, directed by F. Gary Gray, who in the past has done films such as the 2003 remake of The Italian Job, Straight Out of Compton, and most recently he did The Fast and the Furious 8, or The Fate of the Furious, I hate that name. It also reunites Chris Hemsworth and Tessa Thompson, as well as also starring Liam Neeson and Kumail Nanjiani. Most of you are probably familiar with Men in Black by now. The MIB are a secret task force dedicated to protecting planet Earth from extraterrestrial threats, whilst also serving as diplomats to ensure aliens can live peacefully on Earth. And so Men in Black International, we meet Molly, who, after having an encounter with MIB agents when she was a child, she manages to track down the agency and become an agent herself. She is then sent to London, where she meets Chris Hemsworth's hot-headed and egotistical agent to try and uncover a major conspiracy. Took off the blazer, because otherwise now I just look like some bouncer. The Men in Black series has always been known for its energetic, weird quirkiness that kind of drove all three of the films through. The first one I thought was a really exciting adventure, sci-fi thrills that kind of introduced you to this world. Men in Black 2, I know it's kind of looked down upon as this is when they started to lose their way. I actually don't mind it. Maybe it's because it's nostalgia because I grew up with that film. That film was pretty much part of my childhood. And Men in Black 3, I don't hate. It was certainly a significant step down in my eyes from 1 and 2. But I don't hate the film. It was just kind of unnecessary. But it still, for me, had that energy to it. Men in Black International doesn't. This, for me, was a very flat, safe, generic film that, in my eyes, proved a point that it never had any reason to be made. It was glaringly obvious to me that Sony built this film around the talent involved. I remember before Men in Black International was officially announced, there were rumours and reports that they wanted to combine their Jump Street franchise and create a crossover and I thought that was a really intriguing premise but in the end we just get this kind of soft reboot sequel that just hired a couple names oh Fast and Furious is quite popular who directed that last one F Gary Gray well let's let's hire him as a director oh everyone loves the Marvel films oh everyone really loved Thor Ragnarok well let's take Chris Hemsworth and Tessa Thompson and we'll just pair them up it just it strikes me as the fact that they built the film around the people involved and just slap the Men in Black name on it and thinking, yeah, it's a recognisable series, people will go. As it turns out, by box office results, people didn't go. <laughs> the story itself is so generic and perfunctory that it's obvious that the studio thought that the pairing and chemistry of Hemsworth and Thompson would drive this film forward. And whilst it is undeniably strong, their chemistry can't make up for a 100-minute movie. That's just not possible. You can't rely on chemistry to be your sole driving force. You need the story. And the story here is is just predictable. It's never a good sign if you can predict how your film is going to go from the opening 20 minutes. And in Men in Black International, you can't do that. Because you can predict how everything is going to go from the trailer. Hemsworth and Thompson are, do a really good job. Their chemistry is strong and they bounce off one another very well. But the characters have the depth of a paddling pool. We get the slightest bit of explanation as to the relationship between Chris Hemsworth and Liam Neeson's character. But even that is so slight that if you aren't quite paying attention, you'll completely miss it. As for Tessa Thompson or Molly, again, her character is kind of set up in the opening minutes. And then that's all she gets. There isn't really much else to her character, apart from the fact that she completes training within seconds of the film. We don't see any of it. We literally just see her results and Emma Thompson approves her as agent status. You end up rooting for them, not because of their characters, but because they're likeable actors. Liam Neeson is surprisingly off in this movie. And as for Emma Thompson, she's in maybe like two or three scenes tops. Um, the best part of this film, however, is Kumail Nanjiani, who voices this little alien character called Pawnee 
who is part of this warrior tribe and then joins Chris Hemsworth and Tessa Thompson on their adventure. And he's easily the funniest part of this movie. He's got these witty one-liners, but he's also got a bit of a mouth on him. And it's comical, but the issue in regards to the humour for me was that, again, I'm not sure if this was F. Gary Gray's decision or this was the studio's decision, but they rely so heavily on improvisation. And we know that Chris Hemsworth and Tessa Thompson can improvise very, very well. Case in point, Thor Ragnarok. But again, it's clear to me that whoever made the collective decision of getting Chris Hemsworth and the majority of the other supporting actors to riff off one another and just improvise as much as possible. Look, you can be great at improvisation, but in regards to film, if you don't have a director that knows how to shoot it well, or knows when to say to an actor, didn't work for the film, try something else, then it's not gonna work. And in Men in Black International, it just doesn't work. It's really not funny and it's kind of obvious because I was in the screen about a third to a half full and no one was laughing you could literally hear a pin drop at certain points the visuals are fairly decent although I'm a bit of a cynic when it comes to the fact that I love practical aliens and the men in black films have done a really good job at practical design and bringing aliens to life that are real and here you get CGI creations over and over again it, it just comes across flat this entire movie is flat simple and really bland but the glaring issue is the script and the direction if you're going to go with a script that is generic and simple and fairly straightforward that's fine many films can do it but you need to make it stand out you need to make it pop visually you need to make it stylistic you need to have fun with it instead Men in Black International's energy level is probably at about 5%. It plods along going from point A to point B. It's boring. In my eyes, Gray simply was just not the director to helm this project. He's not a bad director. It's just that some directors aren't a natural fit for some properties. He kind of treats this as a pseudo Fast and Furious spin-off. And it doesn't work for this franchise. Men in Black left me feeling flat. It's not inherently terrible and it's nowhere near as bad as some other movies from the summer, but it is incredibly bland. The action is watchable and the two leads riff off one another well, but with a generic storyline and no energy should be found, Men in Black International turns out to be a dud. So overall, I'm going to give Men in Black International a 4 out of 10. Anyway guys, those are my thoughts on Men in Black International. If you've seen the film already, let me know what you thought in the comments below, as well as what film series you thought got spoiled by one entry too many. If you have enjoyed this video, please hit that like button and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. We're getting pretty close to 200 subscribers now, which is kind of crazy considering this channel is about seven months old. So if we can try and get to 200 subscribers, I'm going to say... I'm going to aim for Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. I want to aim to get to 200 subscribers by about August, because that's when it comes out in the UK. Links to all of my social media accounts are in the description below. Many thanks for watching, guys, and I shall see you in the next video.